<laughs> oh, hi, it's been a while. Um, yeah, so Moonlight Blade Mobile came out um, kind of just out of nowhere. I mean, I've been seeing it advertised in a lot of places, um, but it just came out uh, last week. Same with Revelation Mobile, um, but Revelation Mobile doesn't really have much to talk about, honestly. Um, I think Moonlight Blade is way superior in almost every way. Um, that said, this game is still your typical Chinese mobile MMORPG, um, but it's a little more high quality than everything else out there, but it has pretty much the exact same pitfalls as every other Chinese MMO. Um, let's just get that out of the way right away. So, if you've played Raja, if you've played Revelation, if you've played... Oh god, what else, dude? Like, any Chinese-developed mobile MMO, you already know what to expect. Systems upon systems upon systems, and currencies up the ass, and every single type of stat dump you can imagine. You got it in this game, right? So, firstly, on the positive side, um, the, the UI is very good. It's very clean. It's very minimalistic. Um, again, taking inspiration from... I, I, I swear to God, I think Dragon Raja was the first, at least in the West, the first Chinese mobile MMO with a much cleaner interface that isn't stupidly cluttered. Not to say this game isn't still very clut cluttered, because it is. But we'll get on to that. Um, so, firstly, um, let's talk about gameplay. Because something I really do like in Moonlight Blade is the gameplay. Um, this game has, like, proper combos and skill chains and all that really awesome stuff. Um, in addition, every class has two skill setups they can use. So if I go to martial arts here, um, I'm playing as a swordsman. And swordsman has two... Um, uh, two skill setups. One is single single target damage oriented, and one is um, uh, uh, PVE slash um, AOE oriented. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I do wish the skill system was a little more in depth. Um, unfortunately, there's no real way to like swap out skills and stuff like you can in Raja, and same with like there's no like swapping out passives and stuff. Um, but what's here is pretty cool, and you can see there's a lot of different, like, combo skills. Um, there's, like, three or four different trigger skills, as they call them. So, like, for example, if I go to, um, if I actually go over to this skill set here, I have an, I have an aerial move, which I can then use an air combo after. I have a four rush move, an AoE move, burst damage move. I have a block, I have a parry right here. Stuff like that. So there's a lot of really cool um, synergies with skills in this game. And there's, you know, I think six classes or something like that. I'm not sure. There's a good variety. Um, and every class has, you know, those two distinct uh, combat styles, which is cool. I just wish there was a little more customization here. Right. But yeah, it's completely fully action combat, which is great. It plays great. You know, um, there is auto combat, but the auto combat is actually really, really ass, similar to Raja. You're pretty much only going to use auto combat for, you know, dailies and whatever. But if you're trying to use it to actually clear content, you're going to suffer a lot, which is awesome. You know, I think that's a really, really good way to do it. Um, so, yeah, the combat's great. In fact, it's really fun. And the PvP especially is loads of fun. It's if you um, if you remember Noah's Heart. It's pretty much identical to Noah's Heart in terms of how the combat works. Um, and I guess a lot of other Chinese MMOs, and I think about it. Um, but it works well. It works really well. It's fun. As my dog is climbing on boxes and everything. Um, so that's basically the gameplay. But outside of that, there's not really much else unique about this game, unfortunately. The story is completely Chinese voice acted and is boring and generic and not anything I really care about. There's way too many things to do in this game um, and way, way, way too many uh, systems and currencies and all of that stuff. So let's start going through them one by one, shall we? Look at all this shit. 
All right, so first let's talk about stats. So firstly on the left, you have your gear. Um, similar to Raja and thankfully, thankfully like other, um, uh, unlike other Chinese MMOs, there's not like the tiered gear system. It's just, you know, blue, purple, yellow, probably other things later on. And there's different versions of them too, um, which is nice. So I, I do, I do like that. Um, but it has every other type of enhancing, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, on the right here, you can see your XP, what the um, what the uh, server level is. Um, I'm currently behind, so my XP is boosted. Your HP and your um, auto healing and rested XP or rested health and whatever. Your Vigor, which is basically your stamina for doing your life skills, which I'll show off. Um, karma, I think, is for... Yeah, Karma is for uh, PKing, which this game has open PK. I'll talk about that. Um, and then there's two types... Uh, three types of uh, uh, ratings here. Prowess, Power, and Equipment Level. So your Prowess is your overall combat rating. This is what's used on leaderboards and to determine your character's power. Power is, is your PvE power. As you can see here, which is used for um, for dungeons, basically. And then equipment level is um, the sum of level values of all equipment. So that's pretty much it. Now, for your core stats, okay, you have four. Stamina, strength, dex, and int. That's it. Um, and it tells you exactly what they do here. Um, now, depending on which uh, class you play, you obviously want to focus on different um, stats. So for Swordsman, for example, we want to focus on Strength because it gives us 0.5 crit and 0.8 attack per point. Um, and Swordsmen are basically just pure DPS characters, um, unlike some other classes that might want to invest some into Stamina for tanking and stuff like that. But again, all very, very good um, info here. So that's nice. It's all The stats are very basic, which is good. But... The problem is, is, as you probably guessed, there's a million, million different ways to achieve all of these stats. You got titles, which is, this is your standard um, Chinese MMO, like, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like, ranking system, I guess. And this gets exponentially more expensive. Alias, which is your actual titles. Icon, which is, you know, your, like, player icons and stuff like that. I think all of these give you stats as well, but I'm not really sure. And then this is all of your currencies. And, yeah, look at all the currencies in this game. We'll go through the currencies later. All right, next, martial arts we already talked about. Skills are very basic. Upgrading, just press a button, spend silver, upgrade them. Whoop did he do No one cares. You unlock additional effects for your abilities as you level up. Which, again, since you just unlock them anyway, and there's no way to actually um, swap them out and freely customize them, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's good to look into those. Now, mastery is actually where things get interesting. Um, this is a customizable skill that you can unlock um, as you get these uh, books here. Uh, these books, you can either pay to win for them, or you can um, get them from junk dungeons and uh, some other daily activities. And these are a couple different activatables, and there's also passives as well. And you can equip, as you can see, you can equip five of them, um, with the one in position one giving you the most bonus, and then there's also a stat dump system to continue to upgrade them for more stats. Again, basic stuff. Uh, Meridian, this is stat dumps. Drift skills doesn't matter, and guild skills stat dumps. So, uh, yeah, lots of... Uh, but again, the guild skills give you some avenue of customization, but again, it's just a stat dump. Meridian, same thing. Which ones do you want to focus on first? But again, it's just a stat dump. Doesn't really matter. So, yeah, more stat dumps. The mastery system is the most in interesting thing, but the fact that you have to grind forever to get these books rubs me the wrong way. So... And these gold ones are probably going to be super pay to win to acquire standard stuff, you know. Enhancing. Uh, this is standard Chinese MMO enhance this slot thing. 
Uh, elevate. I think this is random stats. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really looked at this yet. Cleansing. This is that other random stat system you see in every other Chinese MMO. Nothing really, nothing really uh, new there. Does give you, does allow you to get some stat customization though, so that's nice. Epitat, uh, just another engraving system for weapons. Again, there's just so many fucking ways to upgrade gear, right? Like this is, this is all pretty standard stuff. A lot of it's obviously you need all of these different types of currencies and blah 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 blah. It just gets ridiculous, right? I don't really know what this crafting thing is. It looks like it's end game gear. Who knows? Tails, this is your dungeons. There's weekly challenge dungeons, and then there's the daily standard dungeons, which give you gear drops. So, there you go. And there's also a level 10 raids coming at level 75, which we don't have yet, but that's cool. Uh, wardrobe, standard. Um, standard costume system and again these are all incredibly expensive and these also give you charm which as you might have guessed gives you uh, gives you um, uh, ability to buy this stuff in the charm shop interesting and also gives you stats as well so keep that in mind guilds pretty standard thankfully the um the limit of members of guilds starts out at 50, um, but this is going to gradually increase to the 100. So, yeah, but again, Chinese MMO, having a guild is literally required in order to play the game. So there's that. Uh, challenge. This is a challenge tower. Uh, this is tutorial. This is... I have no idea what this is. Some other kind of challenge tower thing. And another type of challenge tower thing. I don't know don't really care partners gotcha system very similar to the one in raja everyone has unique abilities you use them in challenge towers and solo content blah 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 blah. standard gotcha stuff fondness and fellowship i'm sorry so fondness relationship system that's in the game you actually need to do this annoyingly i don't really care for it but there you go I have no idea what this follow thing is, or fellow thing is. I think it's like the team thing in Raja, where you make like a 10 person team or whatever used for content. PVP, so there is 1v1 PVP, 5v5, two types of 5v5 PVP, and a 100 uh, participant PVP, which I think is a battle royale mode or something, I'm assuming, um, that's what it looks like. And then you get PvP shop, which you get for materials. Again, all standard stuff. But again, you can just see already how this is all adding up really quickly, right? Story content. Fate, which I don't have yet. I don't know what that is. Adventures, which are side quests. Um, your careers, which is a ton of them. And they're also all required to progress through the game because they all give you different stuff in order to, prog to progress. And you only... Look, man. Like, I just... I, I I can't really... I, I'm going to be honest here, guys. I can't really bother anymore. Like, it's all the same stuff. And it's all just incredibly tedious and just not enjoyable anymore. At least not to me. Um, like, I just... I, I can't say that I really care. You know? I'm trying I'm trying to do a review of this game and it's just I, I just don't care. Because look at all this other stuff we have up here. Limited time gift. You have a battle pass. You have this seven day event thing. You have another login event thing. You have all these other shops. You have the cash shop. You have this event. You have this event. You have this. You have that. All these other things you can buy money for. Like it's just it's too much. It's too much. And at the end of the day, as much as I enjoy this type of game, and quite honestly, I think Moonlight Blade is a great mobile MMO if you're looking for a mobile MMO to play. 
everyone's already like, this is just the same shit again. And it's even more tedious than a lot of other games because of just how much shit, how much bloated crap is in here for just being in the game. And it's just like currencies, for example. Let me show you that. You have silver. You have silver ingots. You have bound vouchers and you have vouchers. So which one is which? Silver is what you use for upgrading stuff. Ingots is the trade currency. Bound vouchers is the freemium currency. And gold vouchers is the premium currency. Now I will give this game credit. It does have a good market system. You can even use silver for some of the items. And you can sell and buy items for, for silver ingots. Drops you get from dungeons. Great! That's awesome! Clap! That's actually great. This is actually a great system. Um, but again, I, I, just, I just can't be asked. You know, I just can't be bothered at this point. There's just too much shit in this game. And it turns into a red dot simulator very quickly. It turns into a checkmark system very quickly. You don't know what the fuck you're doing most of the time. You're just clicking on things and seeing numbers go up. It's just stat dump after stat dump after system after system. Every currency has its own currency and like 10 different ways to acquire it. And there's everything is monetized. It's just... I just, I just can't. I, I really just can't anymore. And to be brutally honest with you, I want to, like, somewhat try this game. But every time I try to get into it, I realize I'm playing it for, like, three hours. Trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. Just clicking on everything, going through dialogue after dialogue of shit that I don't care about. Just to be introduced to more systems that confuse me even more. And more things I need to do every day or every week or whatever. And it's like, do I really care? At the end of the day, am I going to play this game in the long run? Probably not. Um, but if you're looking for a game, if you're looking for a mobile MMO, I think this is probably your best bet. This is the best one to come out in quite some time that isn't purely shit and isn't just pure copy paste it is still copy paste don't get me wrong but it's at least doing something's a little different and it's at least trying to do something different but it's still your standard old chinese mmo but if i have to give this game absolute props because credit where credit is due there is two things about this game that I thoroughly enjoy. That I think is actually a step in the right direction. Number one, the market system. It's a combination of Raja and um, Perfect World, where you can buy stuff for both silver, the in game currency, and you can buy stuff, and you can buy and sell stuff for the silver ingots. That's awesome. And you can get the silver ingots for free. Awesome. You can buy so many useful things. You can sell so many useful things. Fantastic. But again, why do we need four fucking currency? And anyway. And number two. This has to be the best thing I have ever seen in a Chinese... You know what? No, no, no. In a mobile MMO. This is the best thing I have ever seen. In a mobile MMO. Ever seen. Watch this.
cars. Two, not, th not 50, not 100, not 200, not 500. Two, two servers. Why? What? Thank you. Finally, someone fucking understands. All you need, two or three servers, that's it. Even if the entire game is time-gated, even if everything in the game is based off of fear of missing out, time-gates, limited time events, who the fuck cares? There is no reason why we should be splitting a player base 500 fucking times. For these two reasons alone, the player market and the fact that there's two fucking servers, two, I recommend this game. That's it. That's it. There's the only reasons why I recommend this game. Um, and the combat, right? The combat's great. But yeah, I can't recommend this game enough just for the fact that there's two fucking servers and that's it. Like, you're not going to find that anywhere else. It's nearly impossible. And for those who are like, oh, but that means I'm going to be behind and I don't want to play the game, blah, 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 blah. You're an idiot. <laughs> like, I, okay, I under, okay. Let me, let me rephrase that. I understand why there's a lot of people who, who feel that way. I get it. I, I really do. But why do you prefer a game's player base? Keep in mind, this is already an incredibly overbloated market. Why do you want a game's player base to be split 200, 300 times over? Why not just have one server? Who cares? Who cares if everything's time gate? Who the fuck cares? The devs usually implement plenty of events for you to catch up anyway. Who cares? I played Raja like a month late. I had no issues progressing. None. I caught up and got even further than some people who have been playing for that month or two months or whatever. So, rant over. Overall, I recommend this game if you're looking for a new one to play. I think it's really fun. I highly recommend it over Revelation Mobile. I think this is this beats that beyond, beyond that. Um, I hope this game gets more attention. I know it's kind of not doing so well right now, but I really hope it gets more attention because it's a really good, well-polished game. It just has a lot of needless shit and a lot of tedium in it. But other than that, it's good. Uh, yeah, that's it. That, that, that's it. Two servers. Good job, guys. That's all you need.